All right, for question number two, this says they want us to use the equation of the regression line from the previous example to predict what the average achievement test scores will be for the following class sizes, if appropriate. Okay, let me go back and grab that. Uh, here, I'll just copy it. I think it should work. There it is. Okay, got to come down here. All right, so what this is saying is um, if you had the y-intercept is basically saying if you had a class size of zero, you could express, expect a standardized test score of 103. Well, obviously that doesn't make any sense, a class size of zero. But the slope does have some interesting interpretations. Um, this is basically saying for every um, person that we, additional person we put in class, you can expect the score to go down one point. So that's kind of significant. Um, so now we want to use this to um, approximate what test scores we would expect for a class size of 16, 19, 25, and 45. Now, we can plug directly into this, just plug in 16. But remember, these are rounded values, so it's not going to be the best because they're rounded values. Let me show you how to do this in your calculator. Remember that we stored this equation in y1, and we can do this two different ways. I'll show you two different ways to do this. So if you go back to variables, y variables, function, and we stored it in y1, we can say y1 and then parenthesis tell it what we want to plug in. So say, I want to plug in 16. And it'll do that, okay? That is the exact same thing as you would get as if you had actually plugged in, well, not the exact, because this is rounded. But what the calculator did for you was this, and it got um, 86.39. But the calculator did it better because it did not use these rounded values. Okay, So you can do that again if you want to do 19. Another way that you can do this is, remember, since this is stored in Y1, we can use our table function. So if you go to second table, it creates a table of values. And you can scroll through here until you get to 19. A better way to do this is go to table set, so second table set. And right now, it's automatically picking the independent variables to use. If we switch it over to ask, that means I get to plug in which x values I want it to evaluate. So go back to your table. And now you just type in what you want. So I want you to evaluate it at 16. Um, notice that's the same thing we got. I want you to evaluate at 19. And we get 83.26. I want you to evaluate at 25. And it will. Okay, So that's the advantage of storing things. Um, is that we can get these great values without um, having to plug in ourselves and without having to use rounded values. Okay. Um, remember, these are all, I can't type it this way, but these are all y hat. These are all predicted values. Um, so not to be confused with y. Now, the last one, I didn't plug that in. Uh, because, I mean, we could have a class of 45, and you could go ahead and go over here to your calculator and plug in 45 and say, I mean, look, our, we would expect a class average of 56. But remember, I'm going to refer back to the other notes. We should not use this if we're not a linear pattern, which we saw we were. Um, the correlation coefficient was statistically significant. This one. If you wish to make a prediction about a value outside the range of the sample data. Remember, our original sample data was for class sizes from 15 to 29. So using this to estimate for a class of 45, 45 is way outside of the sample data. So it is really not appropriate um, to use this. So that's what we would say, um, not appropriate, appropriate um, to predict. Okay, It's too far outside of our um, sample data. We're going to do a couple other um, examples of this, but that's basically it for this lesson. Um, just want to show you how to use your calculator really well, and we'll do a few more examples in the next two videos.